So welcome to the data transfer track. Uh, I, my name is Hannah. I'm going to be sort of coordinating this track. Um, we have some amazing talks today. Uh, I'm going to start off just sort of like trying to lay some uh, groundwork for the stuff that's about to come. Uh, just give us some, some uh, opening thoughts as we enter the day. Um, I kind of have three core goals with this track. Um, I hope uh, that you will get out of the day. The first is that I, I, I want everyone to learn, uh, level up our collective understanding of the key concepts in data transfer. Um, the second is I want to give some folks who've done some amazing work uh, a chance to showcase uh, and demonstrate the state of the art um, and get you excited about the world of data transfer on IPFS. Uh, and finally, I want us all to do a little bit of reflection, trying to identify common goals, uh, pain points, uh, and just improve our process as a development community uh, working to make IPFS awesome, and particularly in the area of data transfer. So those are our three core goals, um, but I want to hear your goals. So I would love it. <laughs> If, you, if I think for this size room, we better do volunteers instead of go around in a circle type thing. Um, so I'm going to ask for five people, uh, and I'm going to need the uh, the coordinating folks to walk around with the microphone for this part. Yes. Uh, so five people who want to tell us all your name, what city you are coming from, uh, how you currently do data transfer on IPFS in your company, organization, or other uh, entity, how you would like to be moving data transfer, moving uh, data across the wire, what would make it easier, better, faster for you, and uh, finally, what you want to get out of today. Um, what, are, what, are the, what are the goals that brought you here to this data transfer track? And you're going to have a full minute for this, so Organize your thoughts first. <laughs> cool. Can I get anybody who, who wants to be the first volunteer? Yes, thank you very much. I'm Tao Shen. I'm from China, Chengdu. I come here. I came here yesterday, and we are building uh, a Pando project. It's a notarized data layer based on uh, IPRD and IPFS related technologies, and. Uh, uh, you know, these days there is a Web3 uh, festival in Hong Kong. And I mean, with the new year, the China government gave many, many support for Web3 and uh, data economy. And the China government has, have, has set up a dedicated, a separate uh, uh, entity in the government to support the data economy for Web3 for future. Uh, we want to leverage the data transfer and the IPFS related technologies to uh, to transfer the data, for example, in the Web3 data economy scenario. For example, IPFS and the Pando and the uh, Web3 CDN, something like that. Is that okay? That's perfect. Yes. Thank awesome. you. Cool. Who else wants to tell us uh, why you are here? Yeah. You, uh, Hello, my name is Matt Hamilton, uh, coming from Barbados. Uh, the way in which I mainly transfer stuff on IPFS at the moment is sticking it on Web3 storage, uh, generally via their web API or their little CLI tool, um, and getting stuff back that way. Uh, I'm involved in the Filecoin virtual machine, and the first thing we, when we talk to people about FEM and smart contracts and that is, oh great, so I can access all my IPFS data from Filecoin, from you know the blockchain now. And it's like, no, actually you can't. And they're like, <laughs> okay, so how do we get it? It's like, well, first you've got to get it somewhere, and then get it onto a storage deal, and then it ends up on Filecoin. Well, where do we put it first? Well, probably the best thing is IPFS. So really, I'm here to kind of find out about all of the other different ways in which people are getting data onto IPFS first, almost as like a staging area, and then archiving it, so to speak, onto Filecoin. So I'm interested in the myriad of different ways in which people are doing that. Cool. Love it. My name is Walker. I work for Protocol Labs on the Launchpad team. We're the training and networking program. So I'm here to better understand uh, data transfer so we can help uh, teach, teach it to everyone else. I love it. A little bit of learning. Uh, I'm Alex. I came from New York. I work with the Banyan team. Uh, 
we're figuring out, we're scoping out a product for enterprise scale onboarding onto Filecoin. So it comes with a couple of challenges of like, what's the most performant protocol for me to get like a 32 gigabyte car file into some sort of staging area? How should I think about that staging area? Like what types of protocols should I participate or in, like how should I index these car files? Like, so I'm just trying to like think like, what are good tools to help me, you know, solve for this use case and what are good protocols for me to like make something that's like performant and very robust. So looking forward to learning about that. Love it. Hi, I'm Arsh from Mumbai, India. And uh, I am super excited to hear about how IDO is so fast. So that's one of the motivations is the protocol to understand what, what they have built. Yes. Cool. OK. Thank you to our volunteers. Uh, excited to hear that we have folks coming from lots of different places and with lots of different goals. Um, I really like that a lot of folks are here to learn not just about the latest greatest, but also like how do I actually use this? Um, that, that seems exciting and hopefully we'll be able to answer your questions uh, during the day. Um, I'm gonna give you a very brief sort of overview of the stuff we're gonna be talking about today um, and the sort of sections of the day. They're, they're vaguely organized conceptually. Um, in the morning, we're gonna be kind of looking at some state-of-the-art stuff. We've got to talk about the awesome IRO BOW protocol. I don't know if BOW is the name of the protocol, but I'm calling it that. Yes, okay, cool. Uh, and then we have another talk about carpool. Um, then we'll have lunch. And then in the first half of the afternoon, we have a couple more like exciting new projects. I'm gonna talk to you all a little bit about Lassie. Um, and then uh, Jeropo is gonna be talking to us uh, about uh, the Rapid uh, program. These are both clients uh, that, that work on retrieving your data quickly. Um, and then we're gonna have a panel to talk about a project that we've been uh, that's been going on for the last few months called the Move the Bytes Working Group. It's been a group of folks who've been trying to move the state of data transfer in IPFS forward. Um, and we're gonna be doing a little bit of a retrospective on that, so a bit of reflecting. And then in the afternoon, um, we're gonna look at actual applications. How are people building on top of the data transfer protocols available in our networks and um, how are they putting it all together. Um, so that's the basic overview of the day. Uh, I do want to do, just before we start, a little bit of table setting. Um, basically, I kind of do this at the beginning of, I've done a couple data tra transfer tracks uh, for IPFS events, and I find that the best way for us all to look at different protocols and things that are available is to kind of have a bit of a shared vocabulary of terms that we all recognize as important to data transfer no matter how we're doing it. Um, first thing I just want to tell you about, uh, make sure everyone knows, is just a couple of existing protocols. Uh, BitSwap is sort of the original IPFS data transfer protocol. It's now, I think, almost 10 years old. I don't know if it's quite that old, but it's approaching a decade old. Um, it moves blocks uh, over libp2p, and almost everyone hates it. Um, so that's, <laughs> that's exciting things about BitSwap. Uh, I also want to tell you about another protocol, uh, sort of the second protocol in IPFS. Uh, it is uh, called GraphSync. Um, it was written after BitSwap. Uh, uh, unlike BitSwap, uh, GraphSync uses, uh, moves entire DAGs at once. You express your request in terms of um, whole, uh, da uh, essentially, DAG. DAG means directed asynchronous graph, whole groups of blocks that you want to move over, over the wire, um, and you send it to servers, and they send it back to you. Um, it is uh, pretty widely used in Filecoin retrieval, um, and everyone hates it. Um, so that's our second protocol. They're actually both really awesome protocols, but they get a lot of, lot of not a lot of love, a lot of other feelings. Um, so a uh, concept uh, that I want everyone to, to have in their heads is the concept of multi-party data transfer. Um, so uh, most in most of the world of the web, uh, you download data from one source. Um, probably the place you are most likely to have downloaded data from multiple sources outside of IPFS is BitTorrent. Um, and our content addressing uh, sort of like core of IPFS enables us to download content from many sources at once. We should always, we always have the ability, the potential of doing that. Um, and how data transfer protocols do or don't tackle the question of multi-party is an interesting one to have in mind. Um, 
Another con uh, next concept uh, is a thing called incremental verifiability. Um, I just think of this as, as you download things, you should figure out if you're getting what you expected. Uh, again, content addressing allows us to verify the data we get, regardless of the source we get it from. Um, and we should be doing it ideally as we transfer incrementally. So we're not putting, I don't know, 10 gigs on a user's hard drive before we ask if it's the right data. So uh, that's incremental verifiability. Um, a concept that's gonna come up a lot, especially on the client side, is how you plan your queries. How do you decide, how do you plan how to request data? Um, because often you are moving a lot of data. You may be moving a 32 gigabyte uh, file coin car file, or you may be moving a DAG that's much bigger than 32 gigabytes. And how are you going to plan how to get that in one or multiple requests? How are you gonna find it? How are you gonna potentially split it up among multiple parties? How do you avoid duplicate data if you're using multiple parties? And how do you effectively utilize local caches? So this is the sort of query, how do you plan a query for data? Um, Another concept that is important when you start to think about moving data at the level above the block um, is the shared data model. This essentially means in, what does your protocol assume about what both, both sides know about the data being transferred? So essentially, especially like, so as an example, with like GraphSync, you're moving DAGs of data. That means that both sides of the data transfer have to be able to understand and interpret the data at the DAG level. Um, and so that, that actually can introduce a lot of complexity, uh, especially as you have protocols that, that move data with a higher level of conceptual understanding about that data. Um, one other thing to just think about um, in, in, as you hear about protocols is how are they handling all the standard concerns for the server side? Um, server side uh, data transfer protocols tend to have some common tasks. One, how do you keep data moving across the wire when you're serving lots of requests? How do you minimize resource consumption? And how do you respond to malicious clients? Um, so the, so those are, that's gonna kind of matter on the, on the side of the person sending data, no matter uh, what the protocol is. Finally, almost every one of these protocols should have a plan for error recovery. Um, we found, you know, in, in networks, you drop connections, uh, servers have missing or partial data. Um, there are, can be race conditions, consistency problems. Um, and it's interesting to think about how is each one of, how are these protocols dealing with that? So these, so I, I, I just throw out all these terms as like a way to think as you hear about protocols. Think about how is it addressing this particular concern. Um, and then lastly, before we get into the talk talks, um, I want to just talk briefly about um, some trends that I think uh, that I think I'm seeing common to multiple protocols in 2023. Um, I spend a decent amount of time uh, thinking about data transfer and hearing about uh, what folks are working on. I'm in the Move the Bytes working group, so uh, I've noticed some things that are that are cropping up more than once. Um, the first thing is that. I'm seeing a lot more folks really interested in HTTP. Uh, when we started uh, building IPFS, there was an assumption that we had to build a net build from the ground up with a new networking stack. Um, and as time goes on, you're starting to see more folks think maybe we don't need to deal with data transfer at the network protocol level and more we need to think about at the, I don't know, whatever. API design level, essentially, how do you work with existing protocols like HTTP to move data quickly over the wire um, in a content address context? Another, another thing that I've seen from a, a couple folks, this isn't a universal trend, but it is something that I've seen from a lot of folks, is a desire to uh, just deal with the, sm the lowest level concepts in our ecosystem, blocks and SIDs. Um, I've noticed that a lot of folks who are thinking about moving large amounts of data fast want to uh, sort of do away with needing to understand at the protocol level about, at, about anything other than the block and blobs of bytes. Um, essentially, it's like we're all going back to BitSwap as maybe it wasn't the wrong idea to begin with. So, <laughs> uh, it's an, but it, but it's, so, so this is, I, I want to be clear that this is not universal and I see other folks who are doing, who are, who, you know, are actually getting greater 
greater value out of higher level protocols, but this is something I've seen from a few different places where people just want to deal with blocks because blocks are simple. Um, cool. Uh, one one final thing, because you're going to hear a couple talks about this today, um, is the is the concept of multi protocol clients. Um, something like we at various points in the development of our ecosystem, we've had this idea of like, well, if we just build the one like ER protocol that like was super awesome and handled every case in just the perfect way, and we got every single person in the ecosystem to adopt it. Uh, then we could have fast data transfer. Um, and you can see that actually, when you look at that like IPFS principles, it should, they're like, they're actually pretty clear that like the transport shouldn't matter that much. And that opens up the question of how do you build smart clients? Clients that can speak more than one data transfer protocol to get data. Um, and so that's something that I'm seeing more people start to think about, well, maybe we need to not look for the perfect protocol and we need to start thinking about how do we work with the many protocols with different strengths that we have to get our data quickly. Um, so yeah, those are, those are some, some, uh, some stuff I've seen, I think. Uh, this is the last slide that I have and then I'm gonna hand it over to our first speaker. Uh, just to cover just some things that have happened that have happened in the last year. If you haven't uh, been like involved in the IPFS ecosystem for a long time. Uh, the last year has been a really interesting period uh, for I think data transfer and for a lot of things in IPFS, starting with IPFS thing, because I think uh, it was sort of a moment a year ago when we when we met, uh, where a lot of folks kind of were like acknowledging uh, as a group for the first time that the things that we had built, oh, sorry, oh, the things we had built so far um, needed some work and we needed to think about how we can do things better. Um, so that was a, we met about a year ago in uh, Iceland and we <laughs> talked about all the protocols and why people hate them and how we could do a better job. Um, in November, there was IPFS camp uh, and, and that was sort of another larger group discussion about data transfer. And out of that came the Move the Bytes working group. Uh, Move the Bytes began with the goal of replacing BitSwap in four months. Um, and we started meeting uh, bi-weekly in November of 2022. We, saw, we shared a bunch of knowledge. We saw some awesome protocols develop. Um, uh, many of these you'll see today. We have not replaced BitSwap in four months. I always thought that was a little ambitious, um, but we are making some awesome uh, headway. Um, and then I thought it was a another pretty interesting event for uh, data transfer and IPFS was um, number zero sort of doing, starting over and <laughs> attempting a complete rewrite of, a of IPFS uh, to try to attack data transfer at a more fundamental level with a ground up rewrite. Um, and that actually is a great segue to our first speaker, um, Rudiger, who is going to talk to you about the awesome uh, data transfer that they have built in IRO. So, uh, 